morning and welcome to biology class grade 11. So, we have been studying about transport in mammals and we have studied about the blood, we have studied about the components of the blood, we have also studied about the tissue fluid, the blood plasma, the differences and the similarities, okay? So today we'll be studying about hemoglobin and oxygen transport. So the question is, how do oxygen get to uh, where it's needed? How do, how do we have to transport oxygen to the tissues where it's needed? So that's what today's lesson is all about. So let's, let's start. So we said that hemoglobin is a protein found in the red blood cell and it helps to transport oxygen around the body. So we know that this protein called hemoglobin is very important and we know that it's found in the red blood cell, okay? So it helps to transport oxygen around the body. So we want to know how this is done. So how, how can hemoglobin do this? So look at this diagram. This represents the red blood cell. In the red blood cell, we have hemoglobin, which is a protein, okay? So each of this hemoglobin would combine with four oxygen molecules. So this is one, we have two, we have three, and we have four. So each of this hemoglobin would bind or combine with four oxygen molecules. Hemoglobin carries oxygen throughout the body. Okay? So when we talk about hemoglobin, we know that it is found in the red blood cell. And we know that each of each one of the hemoglobin molecule will combine with four oxygen molecules. Okay? So we go to the next thing. The affinity of hemoglobin depends on the partial pressure of oxygen. I'm going to I'm going to explain this. Listen. When we talk about affinity, we are talking about how well would hemoglobin bind with oxygen. How well will, will hemoglobin combine with oxygen? Okay? And when we talk about partial pressure, it means the um, concentration of dissolved oxygen that we have in cells. I'm going to say that again. Affinity of hemoglobin means how well will hemoglobin combine with oxygen? The partial pressure of oxygen means that what is the amount of the dissolved oxygen concentration that we have in cells? Okay, so this is the logic. When we have the greater the concentration of the dissolved oxygen, the greater the partial pressure. So the more dissolved oxygen we have in tissues or in cells, the more partial pressure of oxygen that we have. So the same. If the dissolved oxygen goes up, definitely the partial pressure would go up. If the dissolved oxygen decreases the concentration, definitely the partial pressure that is obtained as K B A would also go up. And if the reverse happens, if it goes down, the partial pressure would also go down. So, a quick one. The affinity of hemoglobin depends on the partial pressure of oxygen. Affinity, you can remember, how well would hemoglobin bind with oxygen? All right? Partial pressure, the amount of dissolved oxygen concentration that we have in tissues or in cells. Okay. So, oxygen transport. We have loading and unloading. So, just think, what do you think oxygen loading can occur? And what do you think oxygen unloading can occur? Just think, what do you think oxygen loading can occur? And what do you think oxygen unloading can occur? Okay, this diagram gives you the, the, the answer. Okay, helps you. Oxygen from lungs is loaded into hemoglobin molecules. Oxygen from lungs, this is the red blood cell, by the way, you know, and this uh, molecules that we have in the red blood cell is the hemoglobin molecules. Don't forget 
hemoglobin would bind with oxygen. Okay? So, oxygen from the lungs is loaded into the red blood cell. The hemoglobin will then bind with the oxygen. You can see this oxygen bonded with hemoglobin molecules. Then this moves down and the oxygen is released. So, quick one, where do we have loading? This is loading. And where do we have unloading? Then this will be unloading. So loading is loading or putting or going oxygen moving into the hemoglobin and unloading is going out into the tissues that are needed. So who can think? In loading and unloading, what happens to the partial pressure during this process? And what happens to partial pressure during this process? So we'll see that. So don't forget when it comes to oxygen transport, we have loading and unloading. In loading, oxygen from the lungs moves into the red blood cell and binds with hemoglobin molecules. In unloading, the oxygen is released into tissues where they are needed. So, let's see this. Oxygen in the lungs, we know that is loading. The first thing that happens because is the concentration of oxygen would go up, increase. Because it's loading, there is more oxygen coming into the red blood cell, okay, from the lungs. The second thing, look, don't forget we said the moment this increase, what happens to the partial pressure? The partial pressure would also increase, okay, because the partial pressure is the amount of dissolved oxygen that we have in cells. So, what happens to the affinity of oxygen to hemoglobin? It also increases. So, the more oxygen we have in dissolved cells, the more affinity that we would have. Okay, so when there is a lot of oxygen, the hemoglobin binds more tightly. The oxygen, sorry, binds with hemoglobin more tight, tightly. So this is it. So when it comes to loading, these are the things that happen. The concentration of oxygen goes up, the partial pressure goes up, the affinity goes up, then oxygen binds tightly. Concentration of oxygen goes up, partial pressure goes up, affinity also goes up, then oxygen is tightly binded to hemoglobin molecules. That is for loading. And this happens in the lungs. All right. So, during respiration, okay, what happens? We use oxygen. So what would that be? Unloading. Okay? We use it. For, for example, you go to the icon market to buy some fruits and vegetables. When you buy it, you load it into your bag, okay? Because you need to carry it to your kitchen or to your house, or somewhere you want to use it, okay? And when you get to your kitchen, what do you do? You unload it. You take it out. Because it's time to make the salad. It's time to make the juice, okay? So that's what happens. In the lungs, oxygen is loaded. And when it's time for us to use it, we have to take it out, unload it. Okay? So when we unload, what happens? The partial pressure goes down. So what would happen to affinity? Affinity would also go down and oxygen is then released into tissues where it is needed. Okay? So we said the partial pressure would decrease, the affinity of oxygen for hemoglobin would decrease and oxygen is released into tissues where it is needed. Let's see this diagram. Okay, the same. What happens in this process? Can you guess what is going on in this process? Loading. And where does this happen? In the lungs, okay? Loading happens in the lungs. And what, can you guess what's going on in this process? Oxygen is released. Then we have unloading that happens in tissues. 
pectoral respiration. Okay, we understand loading and unloading of oxygen. Okay, so we said that. So we said that loading happens in the lungs and unloading happens in respiratory tissues. So you know, in science, to make everything easy, we have things like graphs. We have graphs. We have diagrams. We have charts. All of this is just to illustrate easily what happens. Look at this. We have something called the dissociate, dissociation curve, and this is just more like a graph to show the change in hemoglobin saturation as partial pressure changes. Okay, you remember partial pressure is more or less like the amount of dissolved oxygen in cells. So we want to know what happens to hemoglobin saturation as these changes. Look at this. We have one, two, three, four. This is the partial pressure. Can somebody guess where is loading taking place in this and where it is unloading? Can you guess? Since we said that when there is loading, what happens to partial pressure? It increases. And when there is unloading, what happens to partial pressure? It decreases. So, from this table, can you guess where unloading and loading is? Okay, that that will be your homework one. So let's move on. Let's look at the graph. So this table is put into this graph. You can see that the graph is more like an S shape. It's a sigma sigma curve. So let's see. So we see that this graph shows us that as partial pressure increases, what happens to saturation of hemoglobin increases. Okay, at some point there is a steep in this. That means like there's a steady increase. Okay, like steady increase. So look at this. So it shows us that when we have partial pressure at one kBa, it was just 8.5 percent of saturation of hemoglobin. And when we have 12 uh, partial pressure, we had almost 96.5 percent. And when we have 14 KPA, we had 98.0 percent. So this explains what happens during loading and unloading of oxygen. Okay? So before we go, we are going to uh, your student, your course book, page 169, page 169, question 8 to 11. Okay? And you, you will answer the question. Then you send it to me on WhatsApp, so I'll see if you got the answers correctly or not. So you use the same chart to see what would be the partial pressure of oxygen. When it's uh, 12 kPa, what would be the percentage of saturation? Okay? So you do this homework A and B, and then you send it to me on WhatsApp. I hope you uh, understand this lesson. However, if you have doubts, you can send me a message. Thank you.